Hey, Security Peeps, thank you again for being a part of our Breaking into Cybersecurity webinar series. I am here today. I'm Renee Small, and I am the author of Mag Magnetic Hiring, focused on cybersecurity hiring. Here with my fabulous co-host for today, I am here with Chris Folon. Say hi to everyone, Chris. Hey, everyone. Hey, and I am here with our guest, Joe McAllister. Say hi to everyone, Joe. Hi, everyone. So Bill is joining us from Denver today, and we are super excited to have him talk about how he broke into the industry. As you all know, we host these web this webinar series specifically so that you all can get insight into how various people who've broken into the industry have broken in within the past five years. And the reason why we have folks like Joe on, on, our, on our webinar is so that he can share with you tips, tricks, the things that he's done to help him break into the industry so that you can take away some of those things and hopefully utilize them to help you on your journey to breaking into security as well. So Joe, I usually start out just by asking, tell us about you, tell me about what made you, you know, what you were doing before, what made you look into cybersecurity as a career and kind of like what led you to this journey that you're in right now? Yeah. So uh, first off, thanks for having me on. I um, really enjoy the content so far. So hopefully I can contribute in a positive manner. But um, my background is is a little, uh, I would say unique, but I feel like everybody has a unique background. Um, I actually started out uh, working for a uh, large electronics retailer. Shouldn't really be any secret. Their colors are blue and yellow. But uh, I worked for them for a very long time um, in sales and management, uh, customer service, all of the kind of customer facing roles for a number of years uh, before moving out to Denver from Iowa, where I'm originally from. Mm -hmm. And in that time, gained a ton of experience in kind of the soft skills and, and interacting and kind of getting what I want out of a conversation while trying to service both parties. Um, came in very handy as I moved out to Colorado. I also, uh, in a weird transition, sold BMWs for a year. I like to throw that in because I don't think people expect to hear that from their IT guy or their security guy. Um, but it is uh, it, it was valuable in that uh, I kind of learned what was important to me and learned what I was passionate about. Um, I was not passionate as much about sales as I was the technology and the cars and the fun stuff I got to do and the interactions I had. Uh, so I returned to uh, said retailer and their technical wing uh, working from home for a few years and really got my base of understanding of technology and and how consumer grade technology works before joining my current company in would have been October of 2015. I uh, joined on contract, which was terrifying because I hadn't had a contract before, um, but I apparently did OK and, and transitioned from a help desk position uh, after just about two months into end user services. So utilizing those soft skills I gained, I, I was put in front of our clients and um, in, I should state also, I work for a, a managed service provider. So we have a lot of clients, uh, a lot of different industries. Uh, we service a whole host of applications and, and environments. Uh, it can be overwhelming, but uh, I apparently did all right. They decided to put me in front of stakeholders and, and other clients, and then was also transitioned into um, after a few months there, transitioned into a dedicated consultant role at a client for a little over two years um, and really cannot understate or overstate, uh, excuse me, overstate how much I learned just being in an environment and owning it from you know beginning to end. I did a lot of system administration, network administration, a little bit of database work uh, if I was daring enough and uh, use that knowledge to kind of get in front of the right people to actually get promoted within my current organization to the security team just about six months ago. So I'm very fresh in the industry. Wow. Well, congratulations. Thank um, you. On a side note, I sold cars in a previous life as well. Um, but so you got promoted internally from your organization to your security structure. Um, for those of our listeners that are looking to do a similar thing, um, what were some of the challenges that you faced uh, trying to show your value on the security side um, from your your previous roles? 
The biggest challenge was since I was a dedicated consulting engineer in our organization, I was at the client site all the time. I was essentially a field engineer uh, five days a week, 40 hours a week. Um, so my FaceTime with my organization was limited. Um, I had to communicate through Slack and had to um, really make an effort to, to be seen. Uh, that was by far the biggest challenge, but I did uh, everything in my power to attend conference calls, even just seeing my name in the chat, um, tried to attend any trainings that were possible. We have quarterly conference calls with leadership and they would come into our office here in Denver. And I made a point to go over there and make my, you know, <laughs> make them remember that I am a face within the organization and interact with management as much as possible, attend any training, any certification where they were kind of uh, asking for people to attend, I was there. Um, that was the easiest way for me to get in front of the right people. I also identified people that could kind of help me get to the right place. Um, kind of identified some mentors that have been in cybersecurity for a long time and just started peppering questions, um, used again, Slack, Skype for Business, um, and really leveraged relationships and those soft skills I mentioned before to kind of build more relationships with the people that could help me and also understanding that it's a two-way street so that once I can, what can I bring to the table within our security organization, within our organization um, was was a challenge, but it's uh, obviously not impossible. That's awesome. I mean, one of the things you, you brought up is around having mentors and being a person who can provide mentorship or provide, you know, say, what can I, what, how can I reciprocate? Like, what can I provide you with to make your life easier and it's one of the things that I, I, I hear a lot of um, frustration sometimes with people who with people who are trying to break into the industry and they they try to get mentors and they try to go after mentors and they get frustrated that you know these really seasoned people don't necessarily have the time for them and I share with them exactly what you're talking about you know the more you can provide them with something the more likely they are going to want to mentor you because it's one of them and it's like dozens if not hundreds of you begging <laughs> to be mentored by these people so you know such a valid point that you make that you were providing yourself being of service to these mentors that you reached out to for them to want to turn around and then mention you back yeah. And, and honestly, another very important thing with reaching out to mentors is define what you want out of this before going into it. You, you really can't go in saying, I want to be in cybersecurity because they get those messages all day long. They get those emails all day long. And honestly, they're, they're going to just go out into the ether and you probably won't get a ping back. You really need to define what it is you're trying to get out of it. If it is, hey, I just need my foot in the door. Here's what I've done so far and here's where I want to be that's at least helpful that that might have somebody saying, okay, you're on the right path or saying you need to switch directions. Here's what I would recommend or contact this person X, Y, Z. So what were some of the, the ways that you demonstrated um, either what you were doing to prepare yourself to transition to security or certifications that you did um, to demonstrate to mentors that you're actively working on that path so that they could help guide you along? A lot of just kind of generic research. I used um, Reddit, Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, just to find out what I saw um, as the important things to the community and, and to cybersecurity in general. I also uh, looked up job descriptions and job postings to see what you know three and four letter acronyms they were throwing behind their certification requirements and the knowledge that comes with those. Um, I'll be the first to admit I don't have all those certifications, but understanding concepts behind them is just as valuable, at least initially. Um, you can always attain those certifications, but as long as you can demonstrate understanding, um, it's just as important to an employer, even if you say, I don't have this checkbox, but let me show you how I get it. No, you're absolutely right, especially when it comes to the certs. Well, a couple things that you, you made a point about one with the job, looking at their job descriptions and kind of reverse engineering, like, hey, this is what they're looking for. Let me, you know, go out and get this experience. And I'm, I'm assuming you did some of that just on your own um, mm -hmm. because you're already working, you're already doing, you're working at a car dealership, you're working at the blue and yellow company prior to that, that we all know, with the E, right? <laughs> so you, you're working at the, you know, you're a full-time employee somewhere. So 
you're probably going out there and getting this additional knowledge on your own through places like Udemy. I know you'll, you'll, you know, that'll jump, I'll jump into my next question and ask you in a second, what other places did you go to? But the typical ones people tell us is Udemy, Cybrary, you know, those places where you can get that free knowledge, like you already talked about Twitter, Google, you know, Google, LinkedIn, all that stuff. Um, and then reverse engineered it and said, okay, well, this is what employees are looking for. Let me go get this knowledge, this information and be able to, to, to stack the deck in that sense. Um, additionally, with the certifications, it's something that I bring up very, very often to people trying to break in. You know, they'll come to me and say, oh, I just got a CEH. Now, what, you know, what, what doors open for me? Like, I get these <laughs> messages on LinkedIn. It's like, dude, you have zero experience. You went and you told me for, you did a boot camp for a week. You got a CEH. Like, I can do the same thing. And I'm a HR person, you know, <laughs> that does not mean that now, oh, wow, you're one of these cybersecurity professionals that could go out there and get 100K, you know, so people have to understand, like, it's a combination and just getting, um, I was talking to Ken Underhill, actually, earlier today, and we talked about the alphabet soup of cert, and like you said, you don't even have that, but you have the heart, you, you're in it every single day. That means so much more to employers as someone that can actually jump in and start doing stuff. Um, so I'm so glad you brought that up. So my question, um, and I kind of preempted it a little bit, but, and I know Chris usually asks this question, but um, <laughs> <laughs> this is Chris's usual question. Tell us about the, the sources that you've used, like the free training and what you did and the types of projects that you did, like the self-directed stuff that you could do it on your own. Um, to prepare you for your current employer. And I mean, uh, to add to that, or I guess before that, before you answer that question, another point I want to make is it's awesome to see that you've grown. Like you started to help desk, that went well, you got promoted, that went well, you know, and you continue to grow in your career. So definitely talk to the folks about that. Yeah, I think what's what's really important to realize about a career is nobody's going to do it for you. So getting out there and attaining the knowledge, um, you're also more than likely going to have to do it outside of your work hours. I wasn't researching security all the time during my other roles, but in downtime, sure. But I also was doing it in the evening. Um, uh, Udemy and or Udemy. Uh, we're not and, all right. Yeah, the one everybody else mentions. Uh, Cyberry, both awesome resources that I've utilized. I also don't know how many are aware of uh, lynda.com, L-Y-N-D-A.com. If you have a library card, you can sometimes, I don't want a blanket statement. Uh, I signed up for a library card here in, in the Denver area and was able to get free access to all their courses. Um, normally it's like 30 or 40 bucks a month. So it's an awesome value. And they do have security certifications. They have some other fun stuff, you know, photography and stuff like that. But they do have a, a robust catalog of technical stuff. Um, yeah, it's definitely worth uh, looking into. Um, Plural site, you can kind of also uh, finagle a uh, longer trial typically. If you sign up, I believe it's through the Microsoft Developer Network, you may get something like 90 days, six months. Um, fantastic resources there that also will give you some nice testing options. Um, so you can, you can kind of, if, if you dedicate the time and you really discipline yourself, um, into a time frame, say 90 days is more than enough to at least get some really solid concepts out of a tool like that. So I would say use the trials um, and try all the tools. Not everybody learns the same. So I know folks that do really well with just flashcards, um, not myself, but there are plenty of opportunities. CBT Nuggets is another great one. Their security offerings are a little lighter than I'd like. So I would recommend Cyberry or Pluralsight first, but they do have great networking um, certification, Cisco in particular. So if you're light on that area, like honestly, I, I could always brush up there, definitely look into. Well, Joe, one of the things I wanna compliment you on is um, your ability to communicate your path. And I think that soft skill of being able to relate to your audience, to find out what they're looking to gather from the conversation and to be able to relate that in uh, a manner that they will understand is absolutely exceptional. And I think that's one of the skills that as individuals look to transition, they have to be able to 
share their skills or even if they haven't been doing it but relate what they've been trying to do or studying to do or um how that relates to their their future possible job wh whether it's an interview networking finding a mentor and um i think soft skills like that are something that are is the hardest for individuals to hone in on absolutely i think it's uh I wouldn't even say they're they're underrated skills. I think sometimes it's just tough to um, take your view up a level and relate what it is you've learned, what you've been through, and your lessons. Um, especially when seeking employment, um, they may ask a question, and I've done I've fallen into the trap of being either far too technical or far too vague, and it's really hard to strike a balance. So practice is really key. Um, if you have a partner or even a coworker or a mentor that you can just even do a mock interview, do it Abs every single time do it. So, you know, that's such a good point too. Whitney Phillips was on here a few weeks ago and she talked about being, is she in Denver as well? Oh, uh, no, she was in Ohio. Okay. I was about to say, Denver is like a hot spot, man. <laughs> um, so we've had uh, some really great people on here from Denver. Um, and she talked about the interview process how she went on so many interviews that when she got to like i don't know if it was her current company or you know her 20 something in, something interview she was as cool as a cucumber and she said so because she had gone through so many interviews and so i tell people all the time and you brought this up you know you have to practice interviewing because if you are rough rusty or you don't really know how to step through questions um, because sometimes it's not about right or wrong it's not necessarily right or wrong answers it's really like your thought process so i think about my eighth grade math teacher he was great at this he would we could get the answer wrong right but if you show your work you could get partial credit so if this answer was you know 10 points or whatever and you did everything right but your final answer was wrong you could get nine points out of that 10. Um, and that's really, you know, when you think about interviewing, it's a lot of the time, especially with technical and analytical interviews, it's okay. Well, what would you, if I haven't done something like this before, or even if I have, but I'm a little bit nervous and I can't figure it out. Okay. What are the steps that I would take? This is step one, step two. Three. So an interview can see, okay, this person's either A, nervous or B, you know, they, they may not fully get it or fully understand, but they know their stuff. Like they've, they've done this before. This is, this is showing experience, you know, examples, things like that. And the only way to get better at that is practice, is putting in the reps. And, um, you know, you, you bring up such a valid point. Like, if you can't go, I tell people, interview, just get interviews. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. and go interview. If you can't get interviews, then, like you said, get a partner, let them throw questions out at you. Figure, think about how you would answer those questions and like verbally let it come out of your mouth. It's going to sound crazy initially. Um, you will be rusty initially, just like with anything in life when you first start out. And then you get better and smoother and you're able to really become concise with your answers. And that makes all the difference because when you come in as cool as a cucumber like Whitney or how you showed up, Joe, where you're like, hey, this is what I've done. This is how I've done it. You know, like Chris commended you on the fact like, hey, I can take my story, even your own story. Some people are so choppy, like they make the interviewer and I'm always interviewing people. When when a when a story isn't kind of put together, I start to poke holes in it and say, well, well, well what happened at this job? And what happened in this situation? And, you know, and the more I do that, I sometimes sometimes a person will get even more nervous because mm -hmm kind of asking them, okay, well, why did you leave here? And all we want to see is the progression or the story or whatever. It's not like we're trying to cut up your resume, but if you have like all of this experience and it might not all align to me on paper, but you can tell me a good story like, hey, I was doing this when I started. I grew in this role. I decided, you know, they promoted me here. I want to make a move and blah, 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 whatever it is. And it's smooth and it's like, okay, that makes sense, you know? versus something that might not all be it's the same thing and you're trying to relay the same information but it's coming across kind of choppy and depending on who the interviewer is because every interviewer is not sophisticated 
every interview isn't doing interviews on a regular basis, they might think, oh, something's wrong. You know, this person has gaps or they're not telling the truth or something, you know, something, you know, doesn't seem right. So making sure that the interview skills are tight and that your practice is so, so very important. Thank you for pointing that out. Chris, you have any other questions? I know we're coming up. Yes, on. I do. Okay. Um, outside of the online learning, the self-study, were there any um, real world events, uh, meetups, conferences, or anything that you found valuable um, in your journey? Um, to be perfectly candid, I was hesitant, uh, and this is me kind of showing uh, a peek behind the curtain here, hesitant because of being so new into cybersecurity or being unexperienced, inexperienced, uh, that I didn't want to show my cards too early. Um, and so I'm just now honestly getting around to really stepping out into meetups. Um, there's an awesome or very exciting uh, event at the end of this month that is lock picking with some security individuals from um, mm -hmm. the Denver area. So um, oh, I have to thank you. Yeah, it sounds really cool. One of my teammates uh, brought it to my attention, uh, Mike Pedrick, if he's out there, uh, one, of, one of the mentors that helped me kind of identify what I need. Um, but yeah, I think that would be the one thing I would revise is go to these things. Um, I've wanted to go to things like DEF CON or any conference. There's a one that's literally in our company's backyard here in Denver called uh, Secure World. Um, that I would love to just mosey around and, and even walking the vendor floor, literally any exposure you can get is valuable. Um, and that's one thing that unfortunately I think I learned the hard way. I don't think it, it was any detriment, but uh, that's one thing I would change. And this next year looks much different than, than my previous years in terms of heading the trainings and, and even networking events. Um, if, you're, if you're not that type of person, um, trying to find individuals that you can even grab coffee with. Uh, there's a, a great uh, Denver organization or Colorado organization called Colorado Equal Security that hosts uh, every single Colorado security event that comes up, including social events. So running out to grab a beer with the folks that are in the area um, is, is a much more laid back scene than going to a company's conference room and, and getting training. But there's tons of options. And again, I, uh, I wish I would have taken advantage of them sooner but um, I think internal events are kind of where I played my hand, which got me moving up through our company quicker. That's great. That, that's definitely great advice. And um, if you could share the link for that for uh, those of our listeners in Colorado, they could take advantage of that. Um, I guess one, if you had one parting piece of advice um, for everyone listening, what would that be? It would be, if you are looking to get in or recently in, the the number one thing you can do is just go. Um, absolutely act on everything. You should also not worry about considering yourself a security professional because we all are. Um, security is so pervasive in our daily lives that you are a security professional, whether you're on the help desk or you're a security professional, whether you are the, the greatest pen tester in your state. Um, the, the biggest thing you can do is be active, uh, be that, again, challenging your perhaps social anxiety and getting to a meetup, if it's a small meetup, or just reaching out and having frameworks and, and pinpointing what your path is going to look like and then the steps to get there. Just start going. No, that's great advice. Awesome advice. And I, I love your path and how you did and how you used your internal um, network and conferences and like anything from the internal side because I think that's something that's not typically used as much and people tend to I mean you're already inside of a company and people tend to always look externally so what you did I think is fantastic by utilizing what's within and that now being able to also couple that with you know the external conferences so you made a comment, you said it's secure, something equals? Colorado equals security. Colorado, I'm gonna write that in. Colorado equals security. Yeah, if you could um, send us the link to that, that would be great. And I don't think we have any more um, 
any questions? If anyone else has any questions for Joe before we sign off, we want to be cognizant of everyone's time here. And I know we started a few minutes late because of me and my technical difficulties. <laughs> so, Joe, thank you so much for an awesome conversation. I think there were so many points that you made that were so, so valuable. And what I love so much about this, this webinar podcast series is that every single week we learn something new and we learn about everyone. What, what we're realizing is everyone does have a unique background. I mean, we've had uh, Cornelius with the sales background and Whitney, somebody had a, somebody was a physical therapist, I believe. Before um, Charles came from nonprofits, and you worked at that big blue and yellow company with the B on the front, and it's so <laughs> many like every single person brings such a unique experience to the table. I don't even think we've had anyone that's been like pure. I the only person that was pure security was um, um, Stephen, um, but he he started. He started straight out of college, straight out of college yeah. went through internships and everything like right. that. But even that's a, a unique path to share yeah. with our listeners. Is, yeah. um, the internal route, like like you said, is the first time it's come up because everyone's mm -hmm. always thought about looking externally. But mm -hmm. uh, sometimes looking internally, um, mm -hmm. you can volunteer to other departments, give give extra cycles. Um, work with your manager and say, hey, this is where I want to go. I have uh, some downtime in the day. Do you mind if I help out this other department? Um, those are other ways to kind of move up internally if, if there's not another role available or to gain more experience to, if you are looking externally to say, hey, um, while I have this title at this job, I did help out this other team uh, doing this, this, and this, or um, was part of an incident response team because I was on the help desk or something like that to show um, where you have that level of experience and where did it come from. Exactly, exactly. Well, Chris's awesome point. I am going to close shop for today. Thank you, everyone. Next week we are, oh, Denise has a question before we leave. She's transitioning from a career as a college librarian. Mm. Uh, Denise, look up um, social uh, socialengineer.org. Um, many of the social engineers uh, come from a college libra or librarian background. It would be very interesting to see if that's an area that you um, you're very interested in, because as a librarian, you have to dig into um, what individuals are truly looking for and think of all the different sources that you can reference for that. Um, so that might be a very interesting path for you. I cannot wait. I want to talk to people who've been librarians now. This is like super excited. I get so excited when I hear about all these different paths. Um, so Denise, keep us posted. Ping us on LinkedIn um, and let us know about your journey. And then when you do break into the industry, we want you on the show. So. With that said, have a good, wonderful, amazing Thanksgiving. I'm thankful for all of our guests, Joe. I'm thankful for my co-hosts here. Uh, this is impromptu. So uh, thankful for Chris for uh, being a part of the show with me and thankful for all of you for being able to come on here and share your experiences and as we help more people break into the industry. So with that, have a wonderful Thanksgiving. We won't have anyone next week. But we are starting with our UMEC series. No, there's one more week. So next Friday, not this, uh, the following Friday, we'll have someone in November. And then we are starting with a UMEC series in December. And we're going to have people who went to the University of Maryland, University College. They will be coming on and sharing their experience breaking into the industry um, for the month of December. So super excited about that. So thank you all. Thank you again, Joe. Thank you, Chris. Have a great weekend and a great Thanksgiving. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.